ծանցության եւ ծանր բահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դույմ վահանես իսկ ես քովը կան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together to share in this message. Let's begin as we always do by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as we're getting ready for a very special time in the life of the church, Advent, the season of Advent, this is an opportunity for us to reflect on the purpose of Advent but also to reflect on our lives. In other words, how do we react with Advent? Advent just basically means the coming. And of course, we're getting ready for the big event, which is Christmas. Theophany, the revelation of God. So our church fathers have given us this period called Advent, and it's just coming up in a couple weeks. We'll celebrate that in a very special way, and I'll have a special message for that. But in preparation for that, too, it gives us an opportunity to look within. And I want to share with you a story that comes to us from the Gospel of Luke. And I invite you to read the Gospels. The Gospels are just, they're basically the good news. You know, we, we tend to make it so big and we have these words like evangelists and gospels. Gospel itself means the good news. In Armenian, Avedis. And that's why the, the name of the gospel is Avedaran. Avedis means good news. Avedaran is the gospels, the good news. Okay. So read the gospels. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And today we're going to read a small little passage that comes to us from the gospel of Luke. And it's strategically placed right after the story of the good Samaritan. Uh, that's a very special story because it talks about what our responsibility is to others. So this takes place right afterwards, right after Jesus speaks about the parable. And he says, now as they went on their way, in other words, Jesus and his entourage, he had some friends that were walking with him. They went and they entered a village. A woman named Martha received him into her house. So Jesus had told the disciples, whenever you go into a city, whenever you go into a place, go there and live with them. Let them understand that the kingdom has arrived. And if they don't accept you, he says, wipe the dust off your feet and don't, don't mess around over there. Life is too short. Jesus says that. He says, life is too short. If they don't accept what you have to say, just wipe the dust off of your feet and just walk away. But remind them, that the kingdom had come to them and they refused it. Mm, the kingdom was there. And so he goes into this village and a lady named Martha receives him. So Jesus says, when somebody receives you, stay there, preach to them, give to them the good news. So Jesus comes into this house and she, Martha, had a sister named Mary. Martha, Mary. And she sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teachings. So let's try to picture this. So Martha says, Jesus, come into our house, and I have a sister over here. And Mary immediately sits down at Jesus' feet and starts listening to him, listening to what he's saying. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. Okay, so all of a sudden Mary's sitting there and Martha, she's a nice lady. I mean, obviously, Jesus has come to the house. When, what would you do, right? Can I get you some coffee? Can I get you some tea? How about a glass of water? Can I serve you some cookies? Can I serve you a meal? What can I do for you? And Martha's consumed by that. She wants to serve the Lord something. He's come to her house. And Mary is just sitting there. And uh, Martha says, wait a minute, we're both sisters. I mean, you're supposed to be helping too. Lord, don't you care that Mary's just sitting there while I'm struggling to make things good over here? And Jesus turns to her and says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. One thing is need needed. Mary 
has chosen the good portion, which shall not be taken away from her. So Jesus, instead of saying, Mary, get to your place, go do that, Jesus says, no, wait a minute. Mary's doing the right thing. Because you know what? I'm not always with you. This good message is not always with you. And so it is with life. We see that in life, Christ's presence, the kingdom, comes to us. And it comes to us in a very special way. It comes to us from the smile on our children. It comes to us from our relationships. It comes to us from nature, from all the beauty that's all around us. And we have an opportunity to either react with that goodness or we can be consumed with all the other stuff. Like Martha. Now, she wasn't a bad lady, right? She was very nice. Actually, she was tending to Jesus. This is what's very important. It's not like we're trying to uh, make judgment calls on people. It's not like she was a very bad person. It wasn't like she was, um, she was neglectful. In fact, just the opposite. She was trying to find a way to make Jesus comfortable. And Jesus says, this is not necessary. You are anxious. You are troubled about things that do not matter. What does matter is this message of love. What does matter is this message of hope. And what I want to share with you today, as we're getting ready for the Advent season, we're getting ready for Christmas, it's a time for us to really focus in on what is important in our lives. To find out, you know, what are we anxious about? Are those things really necessary in our lives? Or is there something that is so beautiful, something so rich in our lives that we need to sit down and just take a moment to breathe. You know, there is a practice within our church, unfortunately, we do not use as much as we should. It is the practice of meditation. Unfortunately, I say, because a lot of times when people talk about meditation, they think about um, uh, the Eastern philosophies or even Eastern religions. Actually, Saint uh, Naregatsi, Krikor Naregatsi, was one who was a famous, famous one of meditation. He wrote his book of Lamentations, which is no more, nothing uh, greater than uh, the ultimate of meditations, right? He sits down and you meditate, you look within. You need to set aside a small amount of time. You know, when I've told you in the past about what's the, the, the value of going to church, you have 168 hours all week long. When you go for that one hour in church, it's that time to turn off everything. Not just your phone. Turn off everything and get into a meditative state to be there, to be there one with God, to be in His presence, to be in the position of Mary at the feet, foot of the Lord, and looking up and listening. And it's not always words, it's feelings. It's things that talk to you, that awaken within you that presence of God. You see, each of us has such a complex life that we sometimes forget that it's necessary for us to find that small bit of time to really look within. Because we say God is all around, right? Well, God is within us as well. God is in, within us, we need to just look in there and see. See that the presence of God is there. In the case of meditation, it's an opportunity for us to close, to look within. Now, I invite you to come to church. It's a great time to meditate. It's a great time to feel and become a participant in the corporate worship. In other words, in the, the worship of the, the, the Holy Communion, the Eucharist. You get together as a group, as a body, but there has to be also time for inner, uh, inner purity. Of course, uh, hymns like Dervo Ormia, which is not part of the Badarak, it's actually a later edition, but that's exactly the, the point at which we close our eyes and we meditate, we look within. And you can do this throughout the week. Find some time. It doesn't have to be long spurts of time, but some 10, 15 minutes when you can sit at the foot of the Lord where you can sit and just absorb all that's coming to you. Can you imagine, can you just imagine for a moment what Mary was going through, sitting there at the feet of, of Jesus Christ and listening? Is there anything else you need in life? Is there anything else that you need to put into your life? Because you're full at that point. It's the magic that comes to us from God. It's the realness that comes to us from God combined making us a total human being.
And in the same way, you can find that in your life. Now, Martha, again, I want to re repeat, is, is exactly us. All of us are Marthas. We are consumed with all the other stuff. Even when we go to church, we're consumed just like Martha, aren't we? What should we wear? Where are we going to sit? What if somebody sees? Oh, is my hair right? Do I do this or that? Should I stand up? Should I sit down? Jesus is saying, don't be anxious about that. Don't be troubled about that. That's not your concern. Just get there. Be in my presence. Be with me. Don't worry about all that other stuff. And when we can start doing this, we start understanding that our worship life becomes real. We understand that our religion becomes real. Our faith becomes real. And God lives within us, not just as something we say, but in the actions that we do, in the love that we share with one another. I'm inviting you this week to take the position of Mary, to sit at the Lord's feet, to look around you. And when you find yourself in the position of Martha, don't beat yourself up. Don't say, I'm a bad person because I'm a Martha. No, Martha was a good person. She was just like us. She cared about some really important issues. But figure it out. Figure out what's really necessary. Jesus says here, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many. One thing is needed. What is that? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is yours. It comes to you and you have an opportunity to connect to that. I invite you to find that in your life, to take some time for meditation, take some time for prayer, take some time to be in the place of Mary. And in doing that, you'll understand that as we get in the next few weeks when we start talking about uh, Advent and the preparation for the Christmas season, these uh, the, the, these festivities, such as Christmas, become real in our lives. It's not just a tree that we put up. It's not just a babe in a manger. It's about Jesus Christ living in your life. I invite you to take that challenge. Until next week, I will, God's blessings upon all of you. And I always want to remind you that do everything to bring praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>